It's 10 minutes past two here on a live 90.5. This is Business Insights with Mario and Matt. And our guest is live with us. She is on the line, unfortunately not in studio, but hopefully soon. Catherine, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. It's um, it's firstly, lovely to speak with you, and I'm very grateful that Mario connected us. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here today. (laughs) I'm not allowed to talk. Because I need, <laughs> I need a translator here. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with us today, it's a Catherine Lyle from besieged city of Melbourne, the capital city of everything. But the most important thing is Catherine, she's a men's health and porn addiction specialist. So I'm going to read just a shortly her bio so people you know, know who we, uh, who is our guest today. I started Integrated Men's Health five years ago because my purpose and mission was to educate men on how they can live their lives at a much higher level than they ever thought possible. I've been in the business for 15 years now and I've never seen any group of people, men, women, children, react to these treatments and to commit to their own healing like I've seen men do. So much so that they fly interstate just to work with me. Catherine, again, on behalf of Alive 90.5 Business Insights with Matt and Mario, Thank you for being us with us today in the studio. And uh, for our listeners, who is Catherine Lyle? <laughs> That's a very, very detailed question to answer. But, um, yeah, as you said, we're in Siege in Melbourne. And um, I have a book launch next week, which is unfortunate in lockdown. But um, I'm going for it anyway. I am a single mum. I uh, I have been running into greater mental health for about eight years now and 15 you know working with other people um i'm very very passionate about working with men and um i guess the men chose me i didn't um i was just you know treating whoever came in the door and i started doing a massage course and of course you know attracted more male clientele and um they started asking me what can i do uh, and, you know, what else is there? And what do you want me to do next? And the women weren't saying that. So um, so I started to specialise in men and, um, you know, and here we are today. I'm, I'm a porn addiction specialist and I believe the leader in my field and that's globally as well. There's not too many of me out there doing what I'm doing. Not it's that, very niche, yeah, porn. Yeah, yeah. It's very niche. And the reason I, I'm, like, like I'm personally, I'm, I'm actually curious about it why porn that was my question thank you thank you for stealing my question (laughs) Matt. i mean um (laughs) why porn katrin why why would you you decide why did you decide to go into the porn yeah (laughs) Yeah, i know that everybody asked that question but you know like when we talk about porn i think the porn still has a stigmata even i believe maybe in past two decades you know the the pornography Mm -hmm. uh, at all has been accessible from zero to 99 years old but however why, Catherine, she's becoming specialist in, in porn addiction? Sure. Well, uh, uh, I opened a men's health centre, the only one in Australia that was an alternative health centre where men weren't wearing white coats and, and giving you wafers under your tongue for erectile dysfunction. <laughs> um, and so I started to um, you know, treat men solely, and so did everyone in the clinic, and we started to all see a lot of patterns. And one of them was there was a lot of sexual dysfunction going on, um, and I, I and a lot of mental health, obviously. But that's kind of the you know the the thing out there. We know that men are suffering from mental health, and eighty percent of men are, are, are the suiciding. And um, sorry, eighty percent of the suicides are men. And so I started to think there's something going on here. I just didn't know what it was. And then uh, I had a a male practitioner approach me to come and work in the clinic and he was a porn addiction specialist. And he came in for an interview and I hadn't heard of it up until that point um, other than, you know, in my my personal life, um, you know, having occasional, um, you know, uh, incidences where men you know, the boys you were hanging out with or, you know, people got emails or, you know, it was kind of just what we expect in society that boys are boys and they always watch porn and, um, you know, the girls didn't really know much about it. The women were, you know, their head in the sand or they were just blind to what was going on because we just don't know. And this man came to work for me and um, we did an interview and he started to cry uh, when I started to tell him the work that I was doing. And I was, <laughs> was a bit confronting and I couldn't understand what was going on. And he said, I used to have a severe porn addiction. That's why I do what I do. 
and the work that you're doing is incredible. And I'm thinking, hang on a second, there's something in this because I'm very intuitive and I get this like glowing feeling in my heart, you know, space when I know I'm onto something. And at the same time, uh, I, I started to date someone who had a conversation with me in a cafe, um, a very lengthy conversation about how he used to have uh, a porn addiction. And he went through all of, um, you know, he didn't go into detail about that, but he did also lay out on the table because he knew I was gonna find out anyway, that he had erectile dysfunction, that he had aggression issues, mental health issues. You know, he was, he was just laying it all out because he knew I was going to find out and because of what I did. Anyway, long story short, three weeks later, him and I broke up, but I had started researching um, porn addiction with, um, you know, a couple of links and, and that man never came and worked for me. So those guys disappeared out of my life, but I call them the porn angels <laughs> because <laughs> uh, what I did was change, um, whenever a new practitioner came to work for me, I would change my form that my clients would fill in and all I would do is add one little tick box that said, you know, do you smoke? Do you, you know, what's your diet like? Do you watch porn? And so I changed uh, and I saw 100% of men that were coming in were watching porn. So I started to do some research on it and I started to talk about it online and it was very much um, the not the done thing. And I was attacked um, quite frequently by men mainly, but also by male leaders and coaches in my field saying that I was shaming men. So it was a very, very interesting journey at the beginning. And once I knew that it was 100% of men that were seeing me, I started to do some research in 2018 and I started a survey which um, has around, I don't know, 60 something questions. And I think it's about 300 men have answered that so far. Uh, and we started to see the stats come through from all over the world, from LinkedIn, from Facebook. You know, they weren't my clients. They were from other people, other men. And it was 97% of men were watching porn regularly. Catherine, on that so note, may I ask I, you? I knew. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, I just okay. had the one question, like porn should be the you know, unicorn type, you know, happiness for everybody. It doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> include just the men, but the women as well. So yep. in our conversation, you know, you told me that porn affect mental health, particularly in the male, and mm -hmm. drive to suicide. I mean, porn. And again, porn should be something, you know, happy thing. And maybe I'm mistaken. Do you mind just, just share with our listeners how the porn actually mentally sorry, affecting mental health. Sure. So we just need to define what a porn addiction is first because the listeners will be, you know, Please, assuming means, yeah. certain certain levels and I can guarantee you I'm about to blow their minds. <laughs> Let's so hear it. Watching porn, but watching porn regularly, which is considered once a month or more, is considered a porn addiction. Wow, <laughs> come on, <laughs> sir, that's a month or more. <laughs> Porn addiction yeah. is watching the porn more than once per month. Once per month. Okay. So if you are watching <laughs> porn once a month and yeah. masturbating only once in that month, then you hands down have a porn addiction because you don't masturbate without porn. Right? So that, you know, I've had a 71-year-old come in and he was, you know, literally standing up because he wouldn't sit down and he was stomping his feet nearly and just saying, I don't, you know, he's having a tantrum. I don't believe you, you don't know what you're talking about. And I said to him, all right, let's have a look. When was the last time you masturbated without porn? And he could not remember. I said, how old were you when you first started watching porn? He'd been watching porn for 55 years. And once a month was, was the bare minimum. It was always more than that. Um, but it just depended on what was happening, you know, in his relationship and his wife had died. And, you know, so he went off it for a while. You know, so it, it's a scale. So and at the base of that scale, at the mm -hmm. bottom, is the once a month or more. And by textbook definition in psychology, uh, if you cannot give up something for a month, um, then you have an addiction. So we all have an addiction to all the things in our lives, as we pretty much know. But if you're only masturbating that one time and you're watching it once a month, then you have a porn addiction. All right, so that's at the base of the scale. And then at the top of the scale, which is the record I've seen, there was a, a, a kid in the US, he was 16 at the time and he contacted me and he'd been watching it 36 times a day, every single day. 36 so he's very, times a day. Very that's, a, that's a world 
Give it's a world record. World record. Like, world record. God, you, think like, you, you think you're tired after three? <laughs> yeah, but you know, like because we take, a, you know, like if you take in consideration, like you know, we never spoke about porn in 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 in, in a shape or form. Like mm. how many times you watch or you know you masturbating and everything else that actually is considered addiction, right? Now hearing yeah. Catherine, she's a true expert. I mean, yeah, thirty six times. I, mean, I see it all the time <laughs> like as well. You know, it's not just the the psychology definition. It's not just the men that. You know, I study, I've, I've spoken to over 25,000 men. Uh, I've treated over 4,000 one-on-one. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not, a, the, the myth out there is that um, if anything, it doesn't matter whether it's porn, gambling, um, you know, sex, alcohol, drugs, if it's affecting your life in a way that, um, you know, you can't hold down your job or your relationship is affected, then it's classified as an addiction, but that's that's the myth. That's the that's the myth that men make up. <laughs> mm, yeah, you know, and justify yeah. their behaviour. Yes, but do you want to say something? Alcohol. You know, for someone that drinks every night has absolutely has a has an alcohol addiction. Whether they're an alcoholic, that's a whole other story. Mm. But the definition of addiction is once a month or more, right? That, Especially that is if it's only if. If Huge. they're only watch, yeah. if they're only masturbating once a month, if you're masturbating twenty times in a month and you're only watching it once a month, then you don't have a porn addiction. That makes come sense. on, I mean, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was yes, going to say mate. that's that, that's. I mean, just honestly, when you said once a month, that's an addiction. That just blew my mind. Like all these, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, do wow. Want, do you want me to go into what it is and why? It well, we take it. I was, was going to say. Different? Catherine, let's take like a short break. Yes. Let's leave the listeners yeah, with but, that for but a little listen, bit. Mate, I want to share something <laughs> before the break, you know, yeah. like how to stop porn addiction. When I was a kid, you know, my mom, my dad, and, you know, old ladies, you know what I mean, in, in my neighborhood told me, if you masturbate, you're going to grow the tail. And I was like, I don't want to grow the tail, <laughs> but, you know, somehow you wanted this. And then my dad once, you know, comes in my, he knocks on the bathroom door and he said, what are you doing for two hours inside? <laughs> and those time there was no, the, you know, gadgets, you of know what I mean? Like a, <clears throat> news, I have, magazines. Yeah, I have some old German magazine, 60s, you know what I mean, <laughs> under the washing machine, right? <laughs> so I come out in, from the bathroom, my father was like, you know, he just want to kill me, right? You know what I mean? And then what he did, mm-hmm. he put it under the washing machine and the water washing machine was leaking and my magazine was going <laughs> off. <laughs> I was so angry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you. porn addiction and mental health. Catching Lyle from the Mel- from Melbourne. We're just going to take a short break and come back after the break. Continue more. That sounds good. All right, stick around, guys.
28 minutes past two here on the Live 90.5. You're listening to Business Insights with Mario and Matt. And we're live with Catherine. Catherine, who is a mental health and porn addiction um, a specialist, I suppose you could call that. <laughs> is, is, is that correct, Catherine, by me saying that? Yes. Men, yeah, men's health, mental health, trauma, sexual abuse, porn addiction, sexual addiction, all the things. Yeah, love it, love it, love it. And we were left with a somewhat of a... How, how do you call it? A um, cliffhanger? Where, where you have yeah, we, we're cliffhanger. But, but the, thing, the thing it is, you know, <clears throat> we and I, you and I, in the last couple of months since this lockdown started, um, we spent quite a lot of time try to assist people around us, you know, struggling with the mental health mm-hmm. and, you know, other issues related to this one. But this I will never think, you know, that porn it's, can be addiction, honestly. And they can, you know, Catherine, question on that note, porn, does a porn, it's actually affecting the erection and dysfunction or brain damages or something like this? Mm. Correct. So, a porn addiction is is a neural addiction. So, it's the chemicals and hormones being produced in the brain and the body that your brain becomes addicted to when you're watching porn and masturbating. Right? So, that's what a porn addiction is. Your serotonin, dopamine, um, oxytocin. The dopamine is the addictive hormone that most people kind of know about. We call that the novelty drug. I like what I see and I want to see more of it. That's how it goes. Um, the dopamine will kick in for men that are watching porn before they actually sit down to watch porn. So it's the wife might ring and say she's going out or he's travelling home and he knows that once he gets home, you know, that's what he does before his wife gets home from work um, or partner or he's just single uh, and the dopamine kicks in then. All right, so you've got that chemical reaction. You've got your serotonin, which is your happy hormone, your, your um, well-being hormone. So you get to feel happy when you're watching porn, as Mario knows. <laughs> 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 yeah, Mario knows. Like that's just the way. Yeah, like, yeah that, I know that, this. That, yes. That, yeah, and then the oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone. So women produce oxytocin in high levels when they give birth, um, and it's to bond with the baby. And so we produce oxytocin when we have sex with people, especially if you're all loved up, especially at the start of the dating period. Um, but it's also when we hug our children and our family, um, you know, when we when we touch our pets and stuff, when we're patting our, our pets. So oxytocin is, is the love drug, basically. And unfortunately... Um, all of the acts that men are watching on porn, their brain thinks it's happening to them because of the subconscious mind as well, but also because of this oxytocin. So the subconscious mind says, if I sit here with a lemon in front of me and I start cutting it up and talking about the lemon, you may or may not see the lemon. I could do it in front of you or not. But I put the lemon towards my mouth and I start to salivate just telling that story and most people start, their salivary glands start to salivate. Right, so what's happened there is your brain thinks that there is a lemon and that it is in your mouth, right? So the same thing happens with pornography. So when you're watching it, the subconscious mind, as long as you are having a chemical reaction to whatever it is that you're doing or watching, you, your subconscious mind thinks it's happening to you and then you're bonding to that. So all of the acts in porn that every guy has ever seen, um, is, is bond, he's bonding with those and his brain thinks it's happened to him. And that's a massive problem because in terms of relationships, because he'll withdraw from sex because it's boring, it's vanilla sex, um, it's accommodating sex, there's no fire, there's no whatever. Um, the women are getting a bad rap around you know, sex in the bedroom because the men have done it and seen it all even if they haven't done it in person. And I think right? that's so where talking? like I think that's where the whole side of porn and the addiction side of things really can start to build. Now correct me if I'm wrong because you're the expert, but just the idea of porn like uh, the idea of sex that porn delivers, it's so inaccurate. In porn, every, every, it, it's like they got they got the makeup on, they got the lighting, Man, everything's perfect. Let me, let me tell you something. Video effects. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it is our subconscious and, mind. And, and un- unrealistic bodies as well. And there's unrealistic expectations that, you know, porn is teaching people. That's exactly I right. I don't often come from that point of view because I'm a woman and I'm a practitioner. I like to come from the science side of things because I think that that argument or that, that point is, is so obvious and so well used and they're teaching this in schools and it really we're way beyond that right now we're way beyond that oh porn isn't real because you tell a teen that he, he's like yeah okay he doesn't know any better and he's going to watch it anyway 
and his subconscious mind thinks it's happening to him. And so therefore, when he meets another girl who may be a virgin and has never even kissed a boy before, he's going in with like all of this experience and knowledge and chemical reactions that are going on in his brain and his body. And she's just worried about getting naked. And there's a massive disconnect there. Um, mm. But I'll tell you what happens to the brain, right? So when all these chemicals and hormones, if you watch porn every day for a week, say you're 17, you just got your smartphone and some guy, you know, one of your mates has said you've got to look it up and you're, it won't be 17 when he's first seen. I can guarantee you that. But let's say he watches it every <laughs> 13 for a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's actually um, age 5 to 11 is now the average age that kids are seeing it, so it's a massive problem. Jesus um, Christ. And they've got porn in their pockets because they've all got phones, right? That's true. And parents are saying, oh, yeah, my kids don't watch porn. I can guarantee you that's a load of shit. <laughs> so uh, when they first start watching it, the brain and chemicals just go off. Like if you could imagine the biggest love cocktail in your brain that could possibly be produced apart from skydiving, but it's actually... Um, stronger than skydiving because you're coupling it with masturbation and pleasure. So you've got all the pleasure chem chemicals and hormones going on. If you do that every single day for a week, you have a porn addiction because the brain cannot handle and cannot process what the levels of chemicals and hormones that you are producing on a daily basis. Okay. You're not going to die from it. Catching. But yeah. it has to change itself. It has to. It just cannot stay the same. So when the brain starts to change itself, it then accommodates for all these extra chemicals and hormones, but then it relies on that that next level. So, you know, you, you produce a whole lot, the brain changes, but then the brain accommodates and then the brain needs that extra, you know, extra fix every day or once a week or once a fortnight or whatever your cycle starts off as, it guarantees you it gets stronger and stronger. And you've got the impulse part of the brain that says, we didn't die from this yesterday, so let's do it again and again and again and again. And it just keeps going and going and going. So your brain is addicted to itself. It's addicted to how good it feels when you watch the stuff. You're not addicted to boobs and ass. Mm -hmm. right? and, and, you're not, and it's not a sex addiction. So you're addicted to the feeling in the body. Um, and then, then when people orgasm and ejaculate, that all those chemicals and hormones are flushed out or released, if you like. So you have a, a crash situation going on. So and porn addiction is exactly the same as a drug addiction. In fact, there are brain scans online by a very famous porn addiction specialist who has looked at a heroin addict's brain and a porn addict's brain, and the heroin is, is, sorry, the porn addict is worse than the heroin brain. So it damages your frontal lobe, which is your decision-making, focus, concentration, um, memory. It's the emotional expression comes from there. So you know how we all say, well, men can't express themselves, they can't ask for help. Well, guess why? They have brain damage from porn. Catherine, so that's can, I, that's interesting. Yeah, can, I, can I stop you, Catherine, there? So like, if I understood yeah. well, you know, like we're talking now about men who watch the porn and then, you know, they become addicted to porn or the, you know, perfect bodies, you know, the lingerie, makeup, lights, everything else. They come in the bedroom, they see that their wives, girlfriends are all happy and they want that that experience from the porn to have in a bedroom. Yeah. Okay, this is not fair. Doesn't porn affect women as well? Like, you tell me that women don't want the guy, you know, from the porn, good body and, you know, the driver's license, you know, me to kill and everything else. <laughs> uh, so women, women generally don't watch porn as much as men. And, <laughs> oh, take a short break. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, gotcha. Please and, continue. And, and there are a lot of women that don't watch porn at all. Um, but all I can quote are the stats from Pornhub, which yeah. came back um, each year. And it's a third of women that are watching Pornhub, that a third of women are, are traffic, the traffic in Pornhub. Um, uh, we are seeing though, I have treated some women for porn addiction, but we are seeing a lot of 20 um, somethings coming through. And this is through, you know, obviously I'm not sleeping with women so, and I don't have access to those women in terms of studying and, uh, you know, and my, my focus is on men. But I am now asking a lot of questions from the men that contact me 
about the women that they're having sex with and the 20 somethings are saying that these women want to watch porn while they're having sex with these guys. Yeah, wow. So there's a yeah, so there's an end that mm. they want to be choked and slapped and spat on and they're actually asking for these things to happen um, and they have to have porn on, you know, at the time. So we have a we have a global health crisis in terms of porn addiction. It's been declared that for a long time by the police the um, GPs, and, and it's because of all of these, uh, you know, we have a laugh about porn and stuff, but when you do what I do and you see what I see and you hear what I hear, um, it's, it, you know, I need a therapist. I yeah, you need a therapist as well, but before we take a short break, we need to take a short break, Katrin. Sure. I'd like to say one thing on behalf of Matt and myself on Business Insights. I truly admire you and... Thank you. Yeah, I'm very honored to have that somebody of your profile to talk about porn addiction because, you know, this is the very first time that we're hearing the other side of the porn, not just watching. And for that one, ladies and gentlemen, Katrin Lyle from Melbourne, porn and mental health specialist with us in studio. Thank you, Katrin. We take a short break. Thank you. You're listening to Line 90.5, Business Insights with Marion Matt and our guest in studio from the Sage City of Melbourne, Catherine Lyle, porn and mental health specialist. Catherine, I'm hoping you enjoyed a little bit of music, so I'd like to ask you something different. You know, there's a, your work needs to be somehow put into some type of legacy. And uh, Matt and I, we heard from you that you wrote a book. Can you share a small little bit of your book? Sure. So I've written a number of books already, but, you know, short e-books. Um, there was another, my first book was an e-book publication, never made it to paperback. Um, but this one has been uh, a massive work of uh, research and reviewing the research and pulling it all together. And it's uh, it's a monster. As they said, the publishers said it's the, the biggest book they've ever published. <laughs> wow. Yes. Okay. And Interesting. Yeah. Uh, it, it's cut up into three sections or four sections, though. And, um, and of course, it's, it's called The Uncensored Threat, Losing Generations to Pornography. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I've sat back and watched, you know, from the 12-year-olds to the 80-year-olds. This doesn't discriminate. And I could tell you a a horrible, horrible story for every, you know, age group of the men that I'm seeing um, that, you know, there's men that are, haven't had erections for 20 years, yet they're still watching two hours oh, a day. Wow, wow. You know, I'm, I'm treating children that, or not treating them, but talking to the teens, um, some of them I'm treating and, you know, they're, they're impotent and they haven't even kissed a girl. They've, they've lost, they've brutalized their body. Their brain is still developing to the age of 25 or 27. So they have literally brutalized. They have brain damage, in, impotence, um, anxiety, performance anxiety, all the things. So so this book is, is covers all of that. So it covers the kids and the teens, um, you know, the erectile dysfunction, the porn addiction, obviously, but then the sex trafficking um, and the, you know, the feminism and the Me Too movement and all of the things that porn touches. And if you have a look at all of the issues going on in society, the seeding core of all of that is, is pornography. The um, seeding cause of all of it. That's a big claim. Yeah, because yeah, claim. domestic violence comes from pornography, sex, sex addiction, porn addiction, sex trafficking, um, pedophilia, sexual abuse and assault, rape, um, you know, the, the sexual... Uh, um, you know, just harassment of women all the time, the, the way that women don't feel safe, the reason why we have to have feminism, um, all of these things come from, because porn changes who you are, it comes from the, the control panel of your personality, which is the frontal lobe, which is what gets damaged, that's where mental health, anxiety, depression, um, controlling sexual behaviours, um, you know, learning what's right or what wrong or knowing that comes from that frontal lobe, which gets brutalised from a really young age. It's very rare that men are watching porn or starting to watch porn, you know, at a later age in life. It always starts when they're, when they're teens. So, so I've, 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 so I've got a question just on that. Sure. Is there a healthy amount to consume porn? Is porn healthy in general at all? No. Mm, and not there's, at all. There's ethic, no, because there's ethical porn, and there's all of those, you know, men are visual, and all of these arguments, which I actually address in the book. Um, because ethical porn 
regardless of the content, your brain is still having a chemical reaction to it. You are therefore putting your body into an, an unusual state of excitement. The brain will then change itself and your genitals will become desensitized and you'll have erection issues from it if you're a male. And the, the female genitals also become desensitized. So these people are not present in, in sex because they can't be because they're always looking for this, this other fix. Now, they may not consciously know that that's what they're doing, but they'll be on a brain cycle. So guys will say to me, um, you know, I feel really, really horny and then, I, and then I masturbate and then I'm okay for a few days and then I get really agitated. And that's what's happening. The brain is looking for its crack cocaine and it needs mm. to get it. And, and they'll get it from massages or when porn becomes boring, they'll start looking at other porn that they, you know, they may be a straight male and they start looking at gay porn or transgender porn. They go down what we call the rabbit hole. Um, they can be watching it for hours on end. Porn always turns into something else. That's the other thing. And this is why in the book, I've also researched serial killers and their connection to pornography. So we're, right. we're looking at all aspects of this and how it's affecting all generations, including the women. There's stuff in there about dating and relationships. And of course, my experiences with men are in there, which I'm a little bit nervous about <laughs> launching into the world because I've kept all of that private up until this point. Um, so it's, it's literally, it's really, really powerful. Um, and it launches next week, next Wednesday. So we're seven days out now. That's can I, and, that is you know, amazing. Can I yeah. just can I can I just say something real quick, Catherine? And I, I, sure. I want to recognise the bravery and courage it takes to be vulnerable and share your own experiences in your own book. While the book overarching is not about you, to add that in takes a lot. So I just want to commend you for that. Thank you, and I think all of my ex boyfriends will be very nervous at about now. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you're not going to be talking look, about the specifics. Look, it, you know that you know the funny thing it is people find themselves in the books. Even you don't mention the name, you know, no description, but yeah. the, the truth about behavior, you know, you know how you behave in your, in your, in your, with your ex-girlfriends yeah. or whatever yeah, yeah. it is, right? You know, you know, yeah. there was a exchanging of the words, emotions, actions, even doesn't, yeah. there's no name displayed, you find yourself. No, like, it's like, <laughs> 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 yeah. So how the people can um, get your book from next Wednesday, Catherine? Okay, so next Wednesday, so you can go on to my, um, the links will be everywhere. We're doing a massive blitz on Wednesday and it is available in an ebook for 99 cents for 48 hours. Um, we are doing this because I want as many people as I can to um, get the message because there's tools and, and all of my stuff, my, my solutions to this, apart from me getting involved and treating you one-on-one, -on -one, is all in the book. So it, it's an incredible value and I need as many people as I can to see it, not just for that, but I want to hit bestseller because my and you will journey has... You will catch it. Yeah, and my personal book journey has been horrendous and <clears throat> even just from the time I started writing this book and, you know, the, the environment that we're in in Melbourne and what it's done to my business and my life has been horrendous. So I deserve <laughs> as many sales as I can get so that's what's happening on Wednesday. So you can go to Integrated Men's Health um, on my uh, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Snapchat. You'll find me all over there. You'll find me at integratedmenshealth.com.au, but the book links won't be up there. So you'll have to find me on social media. Um, you can add me as a friend on Facebook. I'm very open. My, my profiles are public. Everyone can see who I am and what my qualifications are and what I do. And the book will go on sale on Wednesday, the 22nd of September, because it's the equinox and it's the 1111 times two, which is very important in the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's when it goes on sale and everyone can jump on and get it for 99 cents. The paperback will also be available for 34.95 that day. Um, and then for, and there's a pre-sale on at the moment. So if you'd like a signed copy, which is a limited edition of 20 copies, then um, they can get the link from me um, for that as well. Lovely. Catherine, Lovely. before 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 we go, you know, we conclude this interview today, you know, we certainly need to have you again with us in studio. You know, there's so many questions, yeah. Matt and I we do have, you know, not just about <laughs> porn, but we are we are living in very challenging not times but world. You know, I truly believe that mm -hmm. society like I can say, you know, you know, <laughs> I was born seventy two in a in a little village in communist country, but you know, 
I can see how advanced society will become on daily basis, and mm-hmm. porn is becoming. It's more prevalent. Uh, yeah, it's it's sex sells everything, right? And there's yeah. no question asked, you know. And you know, I know in my line of work, you know, all these things, infidelity, and everything else we're solving. And but, Katrin, mm-hmm. can you just share for, with us? This is my personal question. I'm very curious. Does a porn affect relationship in sense that men will cheat on a on a wife or the girlfriend because she doesn't qualify as a some porn star? Yeah, and this is where I, I mean, do a lot of work with men, yeah. be, men because um, this is why I get called a man hater. But I actually defend men in this in this area um, and in all the work that I do. But I ask them to step up, and I defend them because I know the science behind this. Like I said before, that porn addiction t- always turns into something else. Always, it has to. So it has a course that it has to run. So your your cycle of once a month turns into once a fortnight, turns into once a week, then it's every day, then it's three times a day, and porn is boring. So you go for massages where you have sex with women and then you go for, you know, um, infidelity. And so the cheating, well, we hate using that word, but infidelity can look like all sorts of things from the porn addiction itself because a lot of women find that, like, you know, disloyal to their relationship because men are ejaculating over a whole lot of other women on the screen. Um, and, it, and it isn't what they want in their relationship. And if you ch- um, change the word porn to heroin, you've got a completely different um, kettle of fish there. And who is going to let heroin into their relationship? So I know, and this, this is why is this day. book is a bit mm. of a, t- a tell-all book, because I've heard so many stories over the years, and I can tell you that the rate of men cheating is a lot higher than what any um, survey will tell you. And in my survey, we actually got men to open up a little bit about this, and you're going to be extremely shocked. This is a toe-curling book that you're not going to believe what some men have actually said about their partners, about their wives, about you know sex in general, um, the the way they speak about women. It's it's really horrendous, and I think it's about 300 percent is the is the psychology stat of you. Um, likelihood of you cheating because of porn in your relationship is actually 300 percent wow so that's that's the stat but i can tell you right now there's a there's you know what's that gray area what's cheating you know a rub and tug that's a whole nother you know, that's, that's, that's a whole that's, nother that's conversation but, but actually before we wind up because we have the time for yeah. the you know for the one more uh, little promotion sure. your book when where yep. how okay so wednesday uh on integrated men's health on Facebook, Snapchat, LinkedIn, and did I say Instagram? Instagram. So it's all the social media. They can get the link there for 48 hours. It's, it's 99 cents. Catherine, thank you very much Lovely. for being our guest thank today. You, Catherine. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, please join us on our website alive, 905.com.au tonight after 6 30 p.m. Catherine Lyle from Melbourne and interview her. You'll be glad you tune it because this was an interview I really enjoyed. Catherine, thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the day, and we'll speak to you soon. Thank, thank you, Catherine. Thank you for having me. Have thank a lovely you. rest of your day. Thank you, bye. Ta.